Is that skill visible to all? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. All right. So, uh, in in this point of discussion, specifically in this chapter, we're going to discuss about uh, um, the classification of the living world. In this picture, you can uh, observe a few things. That is, from the very uh, uh, from the very primitive or the, from the very simple organism to complex organi organism like vertebrates. So, in case of invertebrate, you can observe some corals over here. Can you see the movement of cursor? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So let me opt for the color. So as I can say that the, uh, here it is mentioned about the fishes. They are vertebrates and here they are the corals. All these are the corals. Okay. And corals comes under the, uh, the category of animal kingdom that is Porifera. Okay. The first one. Coming to the basic level of classification, that means what are those, um, what are those levels or what are those uh, uh, parameters on which animal have been classified into different phyla? Okay, got it. So it will be point number one that is levels of organization. When it is when we talk about the levels of organization, it simply means that. Whether the plant is having cellular level, protoplasmic level, tissue level, organ level, or organ system level, we as a human being, we are an organism which is having organ system level of organization because we have organ system for a specific function. Digestive system, it's an organ system. Reproductive system, it's an organ system, right? Excretory system consists of multiple organs. Respiratory system consists of multiple organs. So we can say that we are at the highest level of organization system or organ system level of organization. Got it? Simplest one is the protoplasmic level of organization. And then it will be cellular level of organization. Like in case of sponges, cellular level. Although they are multicellular organism, but there is no tissue. You'll be surprised to know. Sponges, they are multicellular organism, but there is no tissue in their body. How come it is possible? Yes. Anyone? No idea. All right. So we'll be discussing in this chapter, in this discussion about the levels of organization, symmetry, primary germ layers, Silom, fate of blastophore, metamerism, and notochords. So our topic of discussion will be based uh, will be the basics on which the classification is uh, classification are being done or classification is done. First point number that is level of organization, which is a cellular level of organization, right? Present in the very primitive or very simple organism called sponges, which includes phylum Porifera. And that is included in the phylum Porifera. Second one is tissue level of organization. Here it is mentioned first key transition in body plan. Body plan means from cell to tissue, right? This is the first transition from cellular level to tissue level. So tissue level of organization considered to be the first key transition in the body body plan. Example, we can take the example of cell traits. Next one is the organ level of organization that is having platy element these or simply flat forms. Worms are of two types. One is flat worms and another one is a round worm. Flat worm is said to be as platy. Platy means flat. Platy helminthes. Helminthes means worm. Round like annulus ring or circular form. So ask Helminthes. Pardon? Ask Helminthes. That we will be discussing about the uh, Helminthes category. Next will be the organ system level of organization. Right is starting from nematode to the highly complex chordates. Right? Starting from nematodes to highly complex chordates. 
this organ system of level organization will be there. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next one is the complete and uh, 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 next topic of discussion is the presence or absence of gut. Okay, gut is the place where we can consider that where the process of digestion takes place. Okay, digestive tract, which we call gut. Incomplete gut and complete gut means what do we understand by complete and incomplete gut? Complete digestive system, incomplete digestive system. Uh, on what level? I mean, on what basis? Yes, what will be the basis of uh, complete and complete digestive system? It's actually you are right, but I want to know the reason. All of the necessary elements are present in complete. Okay. Look, in case of incomplete digestive uh, uh, digestive system, basically the digestion takes place within the gas uh, within the gastro gastrovascular cavity. And there is complete gut, there will be a tubular structure like in our case, it's a complete gut. Got it? A digestion process taking place within the complete chamber, within the complete tube. Open and close the circulatory system. What is open and close circulatory system? The circulatory system where you can observe that the blood is flowing or blood is coming out of the heart or out of the pumping chamber and started to get involved with the tissue fluid okay tissue fluid mixed up with the tissue fluid and then again it will enter into the heart for example this is considered to be the heart of the uh, insect uh, let's say we can take the example of cockroach right so blood will start to move inside the specific artery and later on uh, uh, get divided or 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 you can say that classified into arteriole and then it will release out of this arteriole into the tissue fluid into the surrounding tissue and again the blood or the hemolymph which we call that will enter into the heart with the help of the opening which we call ostium or ostia so we can say that the blood is mixing with the tissue fluid. That's why it's said to be an open circulatory system. In closed circulatory system, blood will flow within the closed chamber. It won't come out in the normal condition out of the blood vessels. Clear? Yes, sir. Is this clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Rest of the people? Yes, sir. Next one is body symmetry. When there is a question about the body symmetry, so we generally use the three terms: asymmetrical, where the body organization, if you will cut the body into two two halves, in from any plane, they won't be divided into two equal half or symmetrical half, right? That type of body we call it asymmetrical, without symmetry, without superimposable images. Okay. And in certain organism, the body is having radial symmetry. That means the body you can divide in any X, Y, Z plane. That will divide. If you are cutting it in this plane, it will divide the body into two equal halves. If you are cutting in this plane, it will divide the body into two equal halves. In this plane, it will divide into two equal halves. That means multiple plane of, uh, of division will be there. Or you can say multiple plane of symmetry will be there. Okay. Yes, sir. Another thing is that bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry means the body will be equally divided or divided or, you know, um, not actually divided. If we divide, for example, if we classify the complete body into two equal half, okay, especially from morphological point of view, from external point of view, then it is said to be the bilaterally symmetrical. Like if we observe our body, our body is bilaterally symmetrical. Okay, bilaterally, bi means two. 
लेटरल मीन्स लेफ्ट एंड राइट ओके लेफ्ट एंड राइट बाई मीन्स टू तो द बॉडी कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू टू हाफ लेफ्ट एंड राइट Sir, internal okay. organs won't be considered, right? Sorry. Internal organs. Now, as of now, we are not considering the internal organ. When okay. they, we will come, be considering the internal organ, it will be properly mentioned histological symmetry. When it is about histological symmetry, that means even organs are classified in such a way that if we cut the body part into two equal halves, even the organ, internal organs, will be divided properly. But if it is not the case. then it will only be called as morphological bi uh, bilateral symmetry yes sir all right now you can take the example of this scorpion got it generally plane or you can say that the face we can call it as the upper surface generally the upper surface specifically for uh, crawling animals okay the surface or the body part on which it is exposed to the light that body part is said to be a direct exposure to light is said to be as dorsal surface okay all right dorsal surface opposite to that that will be yes yes please So can you repeat once what is dorsal surface? Dorsal surface is the surface generally where the body will get the direct exposure to sunlight. All right. Generally, yes. the word dorsal is related with back, back portion or back part of the body. Okay. Or you can say the region or the surface which is very close to the vertebral column or spinal cord. spinal cord if it is there if not then if there will be nerve cord if it is passing through the nerve cord and the surface which is very close to the nerve cord that is called dorsal region all right yes sir opposite to dorsal is the ventral surface got it and from the point of development the part or the region of the body which is near by that part of the body which is very close to accumulated sense organ region so what is that region where all the sense organs are accumulated how many sense organs we have in our body five what are they eyes ears nose tongue skin skin can i say this thing that all the sense organ they are accumulated they are present in the head part only no where do you find tongue any other part of the body in the mouth in the which is in the head obviously head part head means the region where all the sense organs are condensed or accumulated Sir, skin, skin is found everywhere, right? Yes, skin. That's what I was about to say. Skin is found everywhere, but the my question was, condensed doesn't mean that they will not be present to all other surface. Condensed means all the sense organ are accumulated, are present to a specific location. Okay, it is not like that. The some part of the skin will be there in the head, and some other will be any other part of the body. They are accumulated, and if you if you will go in detail about the subject discussion, face of head part specifically okay that are more delicate more sensitive than any other part of the body got it yes sir clear yes sir now so the region which is very close to the head part that we can call it as anterior end and opposite to that is the posterior end okay as it is written posterior end the distant place or the far away region which is far away from the from the head part that we call, call it as posterior end of the body clear yes sir now talking about germ layers germ layers are that layer of the body 
are that layers of the cells which are formed during the early stage of development it is formed during the early stage of development okay yes sir layers of cells or layer of cells during early developmental stage all right got it yes sir yes sir now diploblastic based on the germ layer organism are categorized into diploblastic and triploblastic if there are only two germ layers present two germ layer present they are said to be a diploblastic okay that is ectoderm outer one and endoderm inner one got it outer and inner germ layer ectoderm give rise to epidermis keep this thing in mind highlighted term ectoderm will give rise to epidermis endoderm give rise to gastrodermis gastrodermis means gastrodermis all those cells all those uh, uh, organs within the body if it is all those organs which is present within the body of any organism that develop from gastrodermis if the organism is diploblastic okay if there will be only two layers that is diploblastic organism okay between two between two layers that is ectoderm and endoderm there is jelly like substance which we call as mesoglea meso meso means middle okay mesoglea is the jelly like substance that will be present within the uh, within the diploblastic organism example cilentrates and tinophora i will be explaining these cilentrates and tinophora in a bit of detail clear yes sir yes sir okay now talking about triploblastic three germ layer ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm outer inner and middle i have called the name outer inner and middle why not outer middle and inner yes go on anyone no okay triploblastic in case of the triploblastic organism mesoderm develops later during the developmental stage earlier it will be ectoderm and endoderm some of the cells from ectoderm will start to migrate and some cells from the endoderm they will also start to migrate and make a distinct layer which will be developed within the within the ectoderm and endoderm that makes the middle layer okay so the development wise it will be ectoderm endoderm and finally mesoderm clear yes sir yes sir that triploblastic organism will start directly from the platyhelminthes layer platyhelminthes or the flat bond category to the higher metazoan phyla we are the metazoans right multicellular organism yes sir Yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Now this is how the germ layer formation takes place, step by step. First of all, there will be one cell which is considered to be a zygote, and the first level of cleavage, this zygote is getting divided into cell one and cell two. Okay, so first cleavage, two cells. Second cleavage. four cells third cleavage eight cells and so on if you will observe this thing why i am calling this thing as cleavage vinous mitosis anyone
Yes, please respond. Any idea why I'm calling it as cleavage term and not the mitosis? No idea, sir. Hitakshi, anyone? Answer it. Don't know, sir. Abhinav Nair. Yes, sir. Please answer. So I cannot hear you, sir. My question is why I'm calling that zygote cleave to be two cells, or there will be a cleavage in the zygote that will give rise to two cells. Why I'm using the term cleavage and not mitosis? No idea. All right. There are two terms. One is called cleavage, and another one is called mitosis. In case of mitosis, the cell will give rise to cell gives rise to another cell of same volume and size. Whereas in this case, you can see now just compare this one. Zygote is a single cell. Now you can consider this one is also a single cell. And the cells of the blastocyl, this one is also having single cell. But the size of the cell is vary. Right? Yes, sir. So every time during that division, when the volume of the cell is getting half, here the con total content of the zygote become half and give rise to two cells, right? Now these two cells will further divide to give rise to four cells. These cells will further divide to give rise to eight cells. But all the time, in all the sort of the development, you can see that the size or the volume of the cell is continuously decreasing. Okay? In mitosis, yes, sir. the volume will not reduce. Clear? Zygote will give rise to another two members, that means multiple cells. And right after zygote, first the cleavage division, till the time of organ development, they are called embryo. So all these are embryo. This, 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 and this, and this, so on. But the, even the embryo is having multiple names. Okay, 16 cell stage, like mulberry fruit, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 up and 8 down, 8 and 16, 16 cell stage embryo, which appears like that of the mulberry fruit. So this 16 cell embryo is also called morula. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, now, this, after 16 cell, then further division takes place and it will be uh, give rise to a lot of a lot member of cells. Later on, what happened? The cells from the inner side, they will start to migrate to the outer region and make a cavity within it. So the blastula will give rise to inner cavity, which we call blastocele. All right. Blastula will yes. be having inner cavity that develops within it and is called blastocele. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Blastula is also the name of one specific stage of embryo development or embryonic development. Later on, you can see the outermost cell, they start to invaginate. Invaginate means depression. The word vagination or the term vagination or the word vagina came from the same term that means making a depression from the external surface. This phenomena of migration of the cells from the outer to the inner world, this process is called vagination or invagination. All right? Yes, sir. Now, later on, you will, uh, you will observe this thing that the first layer of the cells which give rise to the inner layer of the cell, they are now said to be as archenteron. 
and this archenteron will give rise to three layers first it will be ectoderm now you can see that the outer layer ectoderm inner layer will become endoderm now cells from the ectoderm and endoderm will make another layer of the cell which will become endoderm so you can see first there was ectoderm later on it makes endoderm and third time it will make um, mesoderm blastopore now if you will observe this is a pore means opening pore means opening right earlier it was a complete ball hollow ball spherical ball now it is having a enclosed invagination area invaginated area which is having a opening and this opening is said to be a blastopore and now it is said to be as gastrula where there is the formation of the germ layers takes place later on the embryo is said to be as gastrula as there is already developed two germ layers is this clear to all yes, yes sir to everyone not talking about the term coelom Coelom means a body cavity in any internal space within the body cavity. You can see that there are there are body cavity within it. Let me use the pointer. Can you see the movement of the cursor? Yes, sir, but it's very yes, small. It's very small. Oh, oh, oh. How oh, can I increase the size of the cursor? Okay, arrow option is there once again. Is it visible yes. now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So you can see that the internal body is having uh, some hollow region in between the organs, right? And these hollow regions or hollow, hollow or empty places, they are said to be as coelom. Got it? If you will observe the body wall, this is the outermost body wall, right? which is generally uh, distinguished by the inner layer as the pink color and the outer layer as the or orange color. So that is the body wall. In between the body wall and internal organ, you can find some empty spaces, right? And that empty space is said to be as coelom. Got this point? Yes, I sir. use this image. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, please. So as I was telling, so the internal, you got the meaning of silum now? Yes, sir. It yes, is apparent if you will observe the silum in our body, in case of the human body, right? You can see that the entire body, the whole body is divided into two equal halves. Upper part, where there is the chest region or the, or the breast region, that will also having the hollow region in which your lungs are embedded. Your heart is placed in that hollow region. And the general part of the whole body, right below the shoulder, up to the pelvic region or up to the waist bone. Okay? Up to the waist bone or a hip bone. Right? Above to the hip bone and lower to the shoulder bone, we can find that internal hollow cavity is there where all sort of internal organs, they are placed to a specific location. Upper one, 
where your chest cavity is there that chest cavity is called thoracic cavity or simply chest cavity all right yes sir lower to that is abdominal cavity and abdominal cavity and thoracic cavity is divided by a dome shaped muscle or layer of the muscle which we call diaphragm diaphragm correct okay so if we remove all the internal organ we will observe the hollow region within our body and that hollow space is said to be a coelom if we remove the brain there will be hollow region got it yes if sir yes sir remove the from the vertebral column there will be a continuous hollow pipe that is spinal cavity okay so back part of the portion which is having the multiple hollow region that we call call that we call as dorsal cavity which include the cranial region as well the spinal cavity and the pelvic cavity okay where our reproductive organs are located okay especially in female all the reproductive organs they are located within the pelvic region pelvic cavity okay yes sir so you got the meaning of coelom yes sir now these are the few advanced topic related with the discussion fate of blastopore what will happen because here we have seen blastopore finally the open space this blastopore will either become either become the mouth or that will become the ns part of the uh, digestive system okay got it yes, yes. Sir. all right so the process the process where as a result of further development if the blastopore will develop into mouth then it is said to be as protostomus okay got it proto means first and stoma means mouth so first mouth development is the development of the proper mouth that is from the blastopore all right blastopore if it develop in the mouth that development or organism is said to be a protostomes in case of deuterostom another category of organism where mouth will develop later on but first ns will develop from the blastopore is it clear yes sir yes sir all right is this clear to all yes sir yes so that formation formation of the blastopore if it develops into mouth the development is said to be as the organism said to be the protostomes organism or protostomus and if the blastopore will develop into ns then that organism said to be a deuterostomus okay yes sir now next one next term is metamerism mer means unit m e r mer that means unit like the word monomer mono means one m e r mer means unit polymer poly means many mer means unit so meta meta mean multiple multiple merism means unit wise phenomena of having multiple units of the body that is called metamerism that simply means serial repetition of certain organs of the body along the anterior and posterior body axis that means from right from the head to the mouth uh, sorry head to the last part of the body if the development if there is a repetition of the same organ multiple time even internally then there are they are said to be as metamerism metamerism is related to anatomy not morphology anatomical units got it that means internally if the organs are repeated 
in several units they are said to be as metamerisms body externally or internally divided into segments with a serial repetition of at least at least some organs all right yes sir now coming to the word notochord why i am explaining these terms because during the developmental stage we have to face these terminology and these are the basics of classification the animal kingdoms are been classified based on these parameters only that's why it is essential for us to memorize to understand these facts all right notochord notochord is as i said as i've written rod like a structure formed from dorsal side dorsal side during embryonic development what is this notochord it's a rod like structure which will later on develop into if it develops it develop into vertebral column or vertebrae okay within this notochord even during our developmental stage also initially during our early development we were not having complete units of vertebral column multiple bones of the vertebra but a straight long bony structure or cartilaginous structure that we can call it as notochord which is present where dorsal side of the body a developed dorsal side of the body source of origin mesoderm keep this thing in mind always keep this thing in mind these are the important points related with neat notochord is having the origin mesoderm phylum porifera to hemichordata do not possess notochord hence non chordate right from hemichordata chordata we have to study them into the category of chordates so right starting from phyla different phyla porifera coelenterata annelida um, echinodermata okay platyhelminthes askelminthes all these are not having notochord not having vertebral column that's why they are said to be as non chordates the basic classification of animal into chordates and non chordates clear yes sir and that's leads to the end of this show all right yes sir got this point everyone yes sir okay. yes sir so uh, in the next class we'll start the proper discussion proper uh, discussion over the different phyla of the plant uh, sorry phyla of the animal till now we have seen the basis of classification i request you to please go through your ncert book and study it properly in the next class i'll be discussing about the other basic classification of chordates as well as non chordates is that clear okay sir okay yes sir so then see you in the next class thank you sir thank you sir so you are welcome welcome thank you sir bye 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 bye